Here's a dogger. Dog that's been rolling and cow poop. Yeah, kind of stinky. Oh, uh, we got the B95 in the shop today. Um, this is something that's been going on for a little bit, but I'm losing oil out of my uh, wheel hub. And I went ahead and bought a seal for the axle as well. I've got some new king pins. Here a while back, I went ahead and replaced this outer. There's two seals on this, and I'll show you when we get into it. But I went ahead and replaced the outer one because it was leaking really bad. And then filled her up with oil, and then I realized the inner one's leaking just about as bad. So I've already replaced the outer one on this side. But I need to do the inner. So I'll show you how that works. Um, but yeah, I've got some kingpin bushings. I didn't buy new kingpins. I don't know. I might regret that. I may have to. I, I might need them. I don't know. Anyway, got the loader locked up. Just got it jacked up right now. Um, when the back booms off the ground and you got it reached out a little bit, it kind of balances out. So not super heavy but anyway i'm gonna pull the wheel off i'll show you the process it's it's not super complicated lug nuts off turn these bikos off it locks the four-wheel drive engaged so I'm not able to turn this um, but we'll get a drain pan I'll show you it comes off pretty easy so there's actually two bolts that hold this hub or they call it a top hat or <clears throat> and I just had these off recently so these should come off pretty easy that's probably a couple months ago a month ago wasn't that long ago. So basically there's just good night. Two small bolts to hold this on because when you bolt the wheel on it actually clamps everything together. So tell you what, before I split that, I won't blow that dirt off of it. I should have washed it. Try to keep it clean. That'll be better than. I'll probably end up washing all this stuff anyway. bolts out and then this should come off and you can see there's not a lot of oil in there because it's been leaking so that's all pretty clean not bad at all so now I can turn the hub um, but this is a what they call a planetary drive so your axle shaft comes out drives these planet gears sun gear and this is a ring gear planets revolve around the sun but anyway this is locked this ring gear is actually locked in place it's bolted to the hub so it doesn't turn so the, the action of this gear turning against these three gears here is actually what makes the wheel move if that makes any sense um, but what we've got now is a big snap ring on the axle shaft um anyway hopefully these snap ring pliers will work so what you got is snap ring and you've got a couple of wear washers and this one of these is plying to the uh it actually locks into these bolts and the other one locks into the shaft so this gives you 
replaceable wear surface. Now I've got to take these bolts out here. Metric, but 11, 11 sixteenths will fit them. bolts now there's actually these actually push there's a uh, I'll show you so you take two of your bolts after you pull them out and there's some threaded holes here top and bottom and these are pusher these are made for pushing the hub off so we'll ease these in back and forth. That's pretty much it. Now see, this is what holds the holds everything together tight. This piece here also holds your bearings together. So, this is a fitted set of bearings, and from what I understand, there's no adjustment on this. Um, you just basically torque these bolts. I used Loctite on them when last time I did it. I think that's what the book recommended. So, so far, pretty simple, huh? Now basically, we should be able to pull the wheel off. In theory, it should come right off. Um, I think last time I had to use a hammer. And also, feels like the seal's a pretty tight fit because <laughs> I might have to use some pry bar. It's moving. I do not remember it being that hard to get off the first time. So I must have really did a good job of putting the seal on. <laughs> I think she's about, she's about to give it up now. Maybe. I probably should have went ahead and got wheel bearings, but I didn't. There we go. That's how you do it. Okay, so there's this is the seal that was that I just replaced recently. So that's the outer seal, and it's a 
it's a big two-piece rubber uh, so the inner part of it spins that's where the sealing action is it doesn't actually turn on this shaft so that's really all I need to tear down at this point um, from here I'm gonna have to uh, pull the I should have pulled the tie rod anyway anyway I gotta get organized here but you can see that the seal actually will fit over the bearing so the bearing doesn't come off the inner bearing the outer one has to come off so if all you're replacing is this big seal this is as far as you got to go but there's a seal on the inside here as well and that's the one I'm after so I got to pull the king pins at this point and lift the well yeah I'm gonna have to pull the tie rod as well replaced recently as well against the bottom of this um, the front is already blocked up by the floor jack so not sure how effective this is going to be one way to do it there's probably 10 more that would work just as well and now that that's loose uh, it's just a matter of pulling kingpin bolts the LB90 I had before I did do them coming out easy but bottom will not so much see a prime knock there is there yeah it's not much notch on each side of them. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to move.
Gots to be difficult, doesn't it? I hope I got the right forks for this. So we can take kind of like a blunt chisel. easy. out here today. I didn't run it. I really want to. Swing a hammer this much. I think we about got it though. Just can't believe how tight that one is in there. It's moving a little bit. Okay, so the bottom one is a little different. It's got a ball socket. These are different than the old ones. Um, now the top one should, <laughs> well it should come right out. And see, this is more like the standard straight. Um, I don't know if I got the right parts. Regardless, I got to get in here and put a seal in it. So, um, yeah, I just pulled the axle out of the diff. Probably. Now that seal in there is leaking too, so I'm just going to leave, leave that be um, for now. But here is the inner You can tell it's been leaking for a while. Um, but that's the seal and I'm after right there. I got to check my parts and see if I got the right stuff. I probably should have went ahead and replaced the brass bushing in there. Um, that carries the you know that carries all the weight the this actually just floats in the housing on this side i think i don't think there's a there might be a bushing in there there probably is but anyway u-joints seem to be really good these are sealed for life they're not greasable um no no slack that i've noticed so uh, i think i've got a replaceable part for inside of here and like I said, I got to see what I got on that side. So it would appear I might I might have the right parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this axle, half axle out of here. Um, obviously, 
it's leaking just a little bit out of the axle. So the setup on the top kingpin is, and I probably should have replaced the top kingpin. If I had been thinking correctly, I would have went ahead and replaced this, um, or this actually. So this is the part that goes inside the axle. Actually, that's not a bad fit. It's just a little bit loose, but I could always pull this out. This would be easy to pull out and replace in the field. I wouldn't have to take anything else apart, just pull this off, maybe pull the tire off. So for now, I'm gonna just go ahead and replace the bushing. And uh, there is some wear on my kingpin. You can see it's galled just a little bit there. They only wear on one side usually, which is the weight of the wheel pushing over. But this thing has 13,200 hours on it. So I'd say we got pretty good life out of that. So ne next, I just gotta clean this stuff up. Pull the seal, pull these, figure out how to pull these out. It would be nice if this was open to the inside with a, like a cap or something, but they're not. These are sealed. Um, I've seen axles where these actually get broken. Um, and I think the reason they do, and this is a theory of mine, I don't know if it's right, but when you're running one of these with loose ball joints or kingpins, every time you get a load of dirt, it hammers kind of like I was hammering on that with the sledgehammer a while ago. It's just a little bit of hammering every time. And the looser they get, the more they hammer. And the more they hammer, the more they're probable to crack this housing. So mine are, I've had these parts in the shop for a couple months. I've just been too busy to pull it down. But it's been bugging me because I know if you run these long enough, you're gonna break something besides the wore out parts. The wore out parts are easy to fix. The casting itself is a little bit tougher deal. So, and that may be why they made these solid now on the inside instead of having a, a grease cap where you can actually drive the bushings out. This is probably a stronger design. So anyway, I think it's a good deal. Um, so I'll get it cleaned up and then we'll figure out how we're gonna get these pieces out. And it may require, <laughs> Uh, it might require some ingenuity to get those out of there. I don't know. It might, it'll probably be destructive. I don't think they're going to fit real loose. Um, I think they're pretty tight. That's one thing I kind of wanted to look at is how bad this bushing is worn in the top. So if I was to do this again and order in parts, I would have ordered two new kingpins for the top. The bottom one, it's got a replaceable piece on it, so it doesn't need to be replaced. It's just the top one. So after you replace this, you got a new wear surface. The top one, on the other hand, is different. So anyway, that'd be my suggestion on that. And then um, another thing about ordering parts off these axles is get the serial number off the axle. That you can't look these up by the model or VIN number on a tractor, I don't think. A dealer might, but when I was looking them up online, I had a little bit of trouble. Uh, these are Carraro, Carraro axles, I think. Something like that. So anyway, when you're ordering parts for them, it's, it, took, it took me a while to get them right. So hopefully I got the right stuff here. I'm gonna clean this up and move on. Uh, hmm. I got my puller in here. I'm going to pull this seal out of this axle, hopefully. This is a pretty handy uh, inside. I'm going to need a bigger hammer. This might get it. We'll see if the threads ain't messed up on it. Can't 
kind of hard to get to this seal. It's in there pretty good. Well, <laughs> she came out. Anyway, this is a inside puller that I've acquired whenever I got it. Uh, guy gave it to me, but it was missing a lot of parts. So I got the right seal for this. There is a bushing inside here. I probably should have got a new one. But anyway, I ended up building the part where it pivots, so I got some different holes and um, works pretty good for getting stuff out that's stuck. You can put it inside there to expand it and then, well, you just saw how it worked. So I got that seal out. Um, there's a little grime in there. It could have been from me washing this part out. <clears throat> I'm just using diesel. Um, it's probably not the safest thing to use. It beats gasoline by a long ways. But diesel will take most of that grease off of something pretty good. And what I'm going to use is just a, this is an inch and a half socket. It fits pretty well. Make sure I got that clean. Anyway, I had a little delay. I figured out I had the wrong seal for inside the spindle. Not this one. I had the right one for this one. So I called the New Holland dealer. Not going to name names. But we don't have a lot of dealers in Oklahoma, so I'll let you figure out which one you think I called. But, um, Pretty good. We got it in there, all right? I could do. Well, that seal kind of sets flush with the. There's a machine groove in there. It sits flush. In. That went in good. Anyway, back to my story. Um, call the dealer. Kind of got a mess out here. Always. But I thought I had the seal for this. I ordered these parts off, I think, brokentractor.com or something. They sent me this one. It's the wrong one. So I call the dealer and I find out which one I need after arguing with him about the sizes of it. Because when they look part number up, they can look at the size, and he kept telling me, no, it's not this size, it's that size. I was like, man, I'm, I'm measuring it right here. Anyway, he finally calls me back. He said, hey, I found that seal. And by that time, I was on the computer in the house looking at the New Holland parts page. And I said, well, what's the part number on it? I'll uh, look it up and make sure it's the right one before I order it. Just want to verify. Oh, uh, we don't give out part numbers. I said, why not? He said, because you might take it and go to eBay or Amazon and buy it. So I've bought three backhoes from this dealer. And they just lost a customer today. I would have given I would have given them the sale on two seals. But since their policy is they no longer let customers have part numbers, well, dude, I can look it up myself. I can look up the parts myself. I don't need to buy them from you. I don't need you. Anyway, I don't get aggravated very often, and I don't like to slander folks. I don't like to talk bad about dealerships or whoever people you buy stuff from I really don't um, I 
I looked up the part number myself and based off of the measurements on the parts list, found what I needed. I got my part number it's right there. I'll let you have it. It's 87685583. Um, so I call Case, Oklahoma City. It's now ASCO. And they had five on the shelf. So I'm going to get her back together. I'm, I, I thought I was going to have to wait for this seal. I was going to order it from New Holland and, and wait for it. But you know what? If you're going to be a jerk, I don't. I don't care if it's company policy. It, it don't matter to me. Uh, if you're going to treat me like that, then I don't need you. I really don't. Anyway, there's other places to buy parts down the road. Case dealer sells them. Case uses these same axles on some of their tractors. Uh, a lot of the Case New Holland part numbers interchange. That's one reason if you look up a part, Online, it'll say no longer available, but if you click on uh, substitutes or replacements, you'll find the other number. And normally, it's a number that Case and New Holland recognize. So, I got to get this one out. Um, I may do it the same way. I'm going to do this one a little different. This is an awkward piece to work on. Nothing in here is quite straight. So I can just use this against the end of my puller. If I'm lucky, I won't drop it on my toe when it comes out. Got him out of there. A little crud back behind that seal too. Anyway, we are back in business. And I actually do have a bronze bushing to replace this with. Um, the one that's in here. That's what happened to my seal when I knocked it out of there. So this seal is 45 millimeter ID, 60 millimeter OD, I believe, or something like that. Yeah, I think so. I think that's right on. Anyway. Not sure how hard it is to get that pushing out. I might want to set it on. Yeah, we'll find out here. turning back now. clean this up a little bit and we might take it over to the press and put the new one in. I'm going to put this notch in the bushing <coughs> to the back side of the axle. I've got a driver here that I made for something. Maybe a dozer transmission. I don't know. But if it's 
fits pretty good. Now because of this cup, I had to kind of raise up here and uh, we'll have to use a spacer. Hopefully this thing will work. speed so should go in pretty easy I think seems to be going too far or far enough. I need to go down a little further. And I'm certain you could do this with a hammer, but the the seal is a uh, pretty big thick outfit. It's got a Teflon ring, it's got a dirt seal here this is the oil seal this side goes out toward the dirt the spring and cup goes toward the oil let's use a kind of a general rule and this is just a inch and three quarter socket right at flush. Hopefully I got that straight. <laughs> anyway, got that in. Now comes the, the hard part. That's going to be getting the bushings out of the... Man, the hard part's getting the camera off of there. So I'll try to get it down flush with this machined ring here. If you can see that. So the hard part is going to be getting this out and also the cup in the bottom. So I'm pretty sure I got the right parts for this. The problem is my pulling tool won't go under this lip. There's no way to get it in there. So I think just to save a lot of trouble, I'm probably going to fire up the welder and we'll weld a bead inside of this. I'm going to clean it out and get much grease and I'll move my diesel out of the way. <laughs> we might not want that there when we're welding. Possibly. Might be more exciting, but what you can do is weld a bead on the inside of this and when it cools off, it'll shrink this. It should shrink it up enough. You can just about lift it out of there with your fingers. It'll be hot, so don't use your fingers, but you know what I'm saying. Um, is there a better way to do this? I don't know. Might be probably an easier way to do it. But that's probably how I'm going to do it. I think. Anyway. So for this box, or for this weld, I'm going to use this little box here. This little Ideal Arc 250. This is an AC only welder. 
and just a piece of 6011 <coughs> rod and I'll weld hopefully a couple passes around it this welder is a little bit finicky I don't know if it's working quite right uh, generally it gets the job done we'll see We're not looking for a real pretty bead, but what I'm going to try to do is put one down low and then one up higher, so we'll see how it works. I might need to turn her down just a smidge. <laughs> I'm about melted it out of there, I think. We'll go 150. How about that? sure how easy it's going to come out, so let's do this. Should come out fairly easy, I hope. We'll see. Oh yeah. Super easy. Hot! It's hot! I don't want to heat my thread up here too much. Anyway, a threaded rod and a sledgehammer head is pretty darn handy tool to have around. So I'm gonna need to clean out the doohickeys I left in there. So while this axle's still pretty warm, it's hot actually. I'm going to get my new bushing. I had this one in the freezer. right out of it. I 
don't know how deep that's supposed to sit, but I probably set it too deep. I don't see how it matters, but I might have should have left it up higher. The hard one's going to be the bottom one, I think. Um, and once again, there's no way to get there's nothing nothing under here you can get a hold of to pry it out. My puller just won't reach in there. So this one is set down below the surface, so we'll keep that in mind. Um, I think I'm going to use the same technique on it. You can see the backhoe's off the jack, front tire's off the ground over there. Um, how did how did that happen? Well, if you extend the backhoe with a big bucket on all the way out, it'll and the loader's up, it'll do this. So can it fall on me? Um, it could. If a hydraulic hose broke, it could probably fall down. Would it fall fast? I don't think it would fall very fast at all. But um, anyway, I'm not being dangerous, not trying to be stupid. Um, you know, very very seldom is there a time when a backhoe or a piece of equipment will actually come down on you in my experience now it could happen I'm not saying it couldn't Definitely not in there flat. <clears throat> and my instinct tells me to knock it out instead of driving it deeper. If I can get it out. I might be able to. Thank you. 
I gotta get me another one of them. Those are handy. So I don't know if I got a burr. I don't think so. Okay, so top one's in. This bottom one fought me a little bit, and the reason it's kind of deceiving, it looks like it's ice tapered or something. It doesn't really go in there exactly um, the way you'd think it would. I did have it cocked a little bit, so when I got it out, I got it straightened out. Um, camera battery died, so I didn't get to show everything there, but you get the picture. It's in. So, next up would be, I got to put the new ball joint on the old bottom kingpin. I'll mess around and get dirt and stuff I don't want dirt in. Oh, come on. Be that way. Anyway, um, yeah, and that's getting close to being ready to put things back together. So, um, pulling this, uh, so pulling this ball off of this old kingpin. I might use the same technique with a welder and weld around it. Um, it works both ways <laughs> somehow. I've used it inner and outer, um, but you can see that's pretty wore out. So getting closer. for now.
right. Move those. Be moving a little bit at a time. Would have helped if I'd have welded that in straight, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna run out of push because I'm hitting the edge of it. That was almost a good idea. Thought out plan. Good grief. Yeah, we might have to set it in vice. Hammer it off of there. Sometimes you just can't beat a bearing separator. I was able to get enough gap in there that it started so I could get the separator started. Sorry about that, but hit you in the head. <laughs> that was a little bit of a chore. So now this is hot. 
but I got to put the new one on it. I might want to let it cool off a bit. Um, should be pretty easy. I don't know. This is the new one. Need to clean it. It's all dirty now. Anyway, I put that on there. Then that will be ready. So then the only thing I'd like would be putting this back together and putting. Well, I still got to take my tie rod off. I'm not sure I'm going to get to that one today. Um, I probably should since this is already loose. Huh. I'm not going to. I'm definitely run out of time. I'm not going to do the other side. But I'll get this put on. The, get it cleaned up, put it on. This turned out to be a bigger job than what I expected a little bit. I kind of wish I'd went ahead and replaced the bushing in the axle. I don't know that it's that bad, but while you're in there, might be a good time to do it. Also, the thought crossed my mind, probably, you big dummy, you probably should have put some uh, new U-joints in it, but I think they're all right. I'll tell you what, we're going to go to the press for this deal. All right, that's all in place, smashed down. I had to file a few burrs off here and there. I forgot to take it to the press, sorry. It's a long walk and it's hot, so you missed, you missed a good one there. Not really, pretty, pretty boring. Just smashed it right up. Okay, now, this next part, I anticipate this to probably be a big problem. Um, they've got this slotted for a wrench, okay. The problem is you ain't going to find a wrench strong enough to hold that. So we're going to have to get creative probably a little bit and They just didn't leave, they didn't leave enough flat. They should have left a little more flat on that rod out here. So this cylinder goes all the way through the other side, the same thing on the other side. Now, if I start to turn this, it's gonna turn all the way through. And this will actually spin because it's a ball socket. So the only way to hold it would be to put a wrench on the other side on the other ball. I ain't sure I got a wrench that size. Got a crescent that might fit it. If you're working on equipment, about got to have a 18 inch crescent at some point in your life you will need it and you can see I can turn the whole rod easily I wouldn't really want to put a pipe wrench on it but I might have to so I might have to do the same thing on the other side I suppose and then Hopefully the right one comes loose. If that one comes loose first, then I guess I'll change it today. First thing I'm gonna do is set this backhoe back down. Okay, got a pipe wrench on that side, got a hydraulic jack on this side. We're going to see what happens here if we apply some pressure. Oh, 
probably slipping the pipe wrench on the other side. Tension on her. 